Hi all, I know some of you enjoyed um, some of the Shirov games from the Olympiad and I thought this one was quite interesting um, because again Shirov, well he's faced with a potential attack um, but it's nice the way he, he kind of makes his uh, king position look kind of secure. So it was uh, Spain against Latvia in round three so he was playing uh, Norman's Mises um, so he's got a significant rating um, difference. He's, Shirov's 2749, Mises is 2519. And uh, Alexei's also got the advantage of playing white. But anyway, um, it was a, it was another sharp game. Um, so a6 here, knight c3, queen c7. But in, the, in this game, um, Shirov's content to um, castle kingside. So he plays bishop d3. And after knight c6, actually he just takes on c6 and then simply castles. Now with the queen on c7, um, remember we've seen some trap videos. Uh, we've, we've got the Siberian trap and we've got the trap with, with um, knight g4, um, that h-file based uh, trap, the fishing pole. And in this game, um, well, Black actually does try and use the H file, and it, I think it's kind of instructive how White's kind of calm and blocks up the H file a little bit, and then carries on on the Queen side. And we see a fatal weakening move, maybe in time pressure from Black later on, where Black weakens actually uh, this diagonal. <laughs> so I'm giving you an outline contour of, of the game. Um, so E5 now F4. Okay. It looks as though um, this, this could be uh, dangerous for, for black. Uh, but he's got control of the d5 square because of that pawn on c6. So uh, d5 is not going to be such a prevalent theme. Now king h1. Now to bishop d6, f5. And here, here is where black decides not to castle but play uh, this uh, more dynamic approach with h5. So um, I just think it's interesting this game for you know how to parry this kind of attack to have an example in the back of one's mind. So bishop e3 was played first. So the bishop here can be tucked on g1 then if there's knight g4s. So queen e7. Now queen f3. So queen f3. What can we say about queen f3? Maybe queen g3. G7 might be a target. Support c4. Okay. B5 and now A4. Now the black bishop goes to B7. So maybe there's going to be a C5 from black later in the game. White actually takes now, in any case, uh, as if he's, he doesn't mind facing that bishop on that diagonal. But black actually takes with the A pawn. Um, if he takes with the C pawn, may, maybe knight D5. And that's actually justifying the queen more. And also potentially giving white this e4 square for ed. We can imagine uh, the e4 square might become a useful pivot square uh, for other operations. Or even across the fourth rank. If there was ed, um, well, anyway. So a, a takes b5 was played. So rook a8, bishop takes a8. And now bishop g5. So black's, uh, you know, in an uncomfortable position. Um, you know, he's committing his rook on this h file. But. Um, how to actually, you know, refute this black setup? Bishop b7 here, and now rook d1. Quiet move. Um, so maybe with the idea of intensifying some pressure on the d file, but there's no, there's no real entry points we could say at this at this moment. King f8, and now this move knight e2. So maybe uh, knight g3 and h5 could be a target after bishop f6s. So black actually, I don't know, maybe he was concerned about this and played h4. I'm, I'm trying my best to get some empathy for the moves, but these are like best guesses here. You know, was h4 actually designed, designed against knight g3? It would seem a reasonable um, assumption. But also, you know, if black gets a pawn to h3, and later, um, you know, that pawn might be useful as well. Okay. But now knight, knight g1 was played seemingly passive. Um, move here. Uh, but if the knight goes to h3 then there's no concerns later uh, if, if the knight wasn't pinned about maybe knight h5 to, to, to g3 and stuff like that or, eight, or h3s of course. So the knight does go to h3 and now bishop c5. Black's 
obviously also not concerned about offering double pawns. That's not in White's interest here, I, I think. It will be kind of um, solidifying the center, and maybe Black can use the G file, and it will give the rook another square on G8. So Shelves in no hurry for Bishop takes F6s. He plays actually just Queen E2. Another, sorry, seemingly quite um, a waiting move. Seeing what Black's going to do next, Black actually just uh, played Bishop e7, and now we we start to see a start of uh, some concrete action, uh, positioning against Black structure. So Black is is restrained at the moment from c5 because that b5 pawn with e4 secure, uh, but maybe he does want to fix these pawns. So this next move c3, I think, does have the idea of trying to restrain you know the Black pawn structure. Okay, so knight h5 was now played. Uh, with this knight on h3, as I, as I mentioned before, these knight g3 tactics uh, are not so effective here. You, you could imagine if it was ripping open the h right, it could, it could potentially be kind of dangerous. But white's got control of this diagonal as well at the moment, so his king's got nothing to fear at the moment. Bishop c2, and we see a potential also... Um, that c3 has enabled the potential rerouting on this diagonal. So queen a5, but now b4. So there's two aspects to this, the c3 move. Not only supporting a bishop rerouting, but restraining these queenside pawns. And the, the black queen's quite adventurous now with queen a2. So how can it be evicted? It might be quite useful there, uh, annoying um, pin tactically, of course. Queen d2. Uh, with with maybe the idea of bishop c5 and queen d8 as a tactical threat. So knight e8 was played here. Okay, knight f2, and this does introduce um, quite a few ideas now, especially with that knight has just gone, for, you know, to e8. There's maybe knight g4 hitting e5, or knight d3. Uh, maybe to go to c5, this could be a sensitive square. So knight f2 is quite quite nice now, but it does allow this h3 move, which um, you know doesn't uh, didn't seem to generate the counterplay maybe Black had hoped for. Maybe it was a bit of a desperate uh, pawn sack. It does permanently activate the rook, though. Okay, so uh, c5 now. Again, Black's getting kind of maybe restless in the position. Um, so he's offering another pawn, which is again taken. But these are double pawns, so maybe he wasn't too bothered about these ones, and he wasn't too bothered about that one because it is activating the rook. So black, we could say, is playing very actively. Um, now the move uh, queen c4, striking at that e4 square as well. So knight g5 was played now. So this uh, clearly protects e4, but also f6 is there's knight e6. But also f7 might prove sensitive. Uh, so the knight is actually chased away, uh, or tried to be chased away with rook h5. But sure, if he keeps it there. He just plays queen e3, just holding on to his c5 pawn. Let, let's see, actually, in this position, if queen takes c5, um, was, was there something quite nasty waiting for black in this position after queen takes c5? Maybe, maybe indeed it is to do with f7 here. Bishop b3 looks um, good. I don't particularly want to check this with an engine, but f6 would be a disaster, of course, with knight e6 check. Um, so bishop b3, maybe, maybe that's the point. That this diagonal is now already kind of dangerous um, for the black king, and f7 is, is a real target. So, okay, so queen e3 protecting the pawn. So Shurov is now two pawns up against this 2500 opponent and now b4 is played so exploiting that pin on the bishop and seemingly getting a running um, past pawn but um, knight f3 is just calmly played attacking e5 what is black going to do about e5 if he, if he routinely defends it with f6 he is weakening that diagonal a bit further um, actually he, he does play b3 now and now he does play f6 so we see a potential uh, virtual trap against the Black King now, because if this pawn further moves, then we, we can remember Maurice Ashley's The Secret of Chess in the weakness of the last moves. Especially pawn moves, uh, this would mean, you know, this diagonal has got an access point, A2. Okay, so G4 is played, and now King G2. 
as if you know m maybe you know white can start playing on the king side as well with h4 bishop c6 now king g3 as if definitely h4 is is supported and, and the knight would still be free to move uh, without losing the h4 pawn uh, but in, now actually h4 is used for the knight to gain access to, to potentially g6 so knight h4 and this this position starting um, to feel the pressure for black he actually uh, sacrifices the exchange here um, maybe, maybe this this is looking hopeless all of a sudden so it's not f7 it's g6 as well so rook takes h4 was played and now the move b2 um, but as I say there's an access point now on this diagonal as well so queen e2 queen a3 and now that access point is exploited with this fine move queen c4 so with bishop a2 as an imminent threat this looks absolutely critical and indeed after bishop a2 here black resigned so i th i thought it was an interesting game how how to remain calm in the face of a you know an h pawn push from the opponent in the sicilian defense so maybe something to bear in mind so Chuov just took on c6 not minding black having some control of d5 here and also playing this kind of committal setup with f5 not minding um, you know this does mean that you know black is not obliged to castle black can use the h pawn um, but it means you know potentially uh, it's, it's committing the rook to h8 and white started you know playing positionally on, on, on the queen side this plan of moving the knight c3 and b4 and then trying to gain access on this diagonal i thought was was quite interesting and instructive but also how the knight was used you know to go to h3 to calm things down there first so now this this other plan was initiated of restraint on the queen side and almost like as sure as um he, he's collecting an advantage on the king side and returning to the queen side now so after this knight f2 this this caused a bit of a panic for black so because knight d3 to c5 would hem in that bishop as well and um, and further restrain the black pawns so um this this is now a critical uh position so knight g5 did, did also emphasize bishop b freeze as a potential um major threat to deal with uh so which is which is why i think white ended up just being two pawns up now and um further advantages collected on the king side with these these nice king movements supporting actually knight h4 so it wasn't just h4 it was the more more uh, more dangerous knight h4 to g6 being prepared with the king actually moving to g3 actually if we look at this in retrospect the king moving to g3 to support knight h4 is fairly nifty in itself so and then black just just suffering to have to do an exchange sack and then this final hijacking of that diagonal because of that b2 being played um hope you enjoyed it please leave any comments or questions on youtube thanks very much